West as Nigeria. I mean, Kenya, they're just shooting Christians everywhere, taking over. Again, our government financing them to kill Christians. That's the apple of their eye. The scandal's so huge, it's hiding in plain view, and no one even knows this. I want to remind you this has been done before. Airlift of Evil, November 2001, one month after the fake invasion of <clears throat> Afghanistan. Oh, our troops were getting killed fighting real Taliban, folks that didn't want to give up their property, give up their opium, and 14-year-old conscripts put in ditches to be bombed by U.S. planes who thought they were fighting al-Qaeda. 40,000 real al-Qaeda Taliban were put, Council on Foreign Relations, AP, Reuters, NBC, look it up, Times of London, were put and paid in gold, flown into Pakistan to start destabilizing Pakistan. And that's not just the admitted facts. <clears throat> General Hamid Ghul, the former supreme commander of the military, the head, founder of operations against the Russians in Afghanistan, exclusively comes on our show five separate times to confirm my analysis and to say, yes, they've put al-Qaeda here to destabilize and stir up the um, folks they're affiliated with, but real Muslims who are affiliated with Wahhabist-type Sunnis but aren't al-Qaeda to stir them up with drone attacks and other things so they'll overthrow our secular government just like they're doing it in Syria, just like they're doing it in Iraq. And then just like they use them in Europe and the U.S. to take our rights in the name of fighting the group that they control. <clears throat> Al-Qaeda is the secret army skeleton key meant to open every door for total control across the world. So there's the airlift of uh, evil article. There it is. British special forces caught dressed up as Arab terrorists in 2006, 7 and 8. They got caught dressed up by Iraqi police attacking and shooting Shiites, so they could cause a war between Shiites and Sunnis and get a civil war going. Again, same story, BBC, Guardian, they all had to report on that operation when it got blown wide open. So if they can't get Al-Qaeda into an area to stir stuff up, they'll dress up with the big Bin Laden beards, the turban on their head, the black flags, and go do it. We've shown you photos uh, of those guys. They had to have tanks go into the Iraqi jail and blow it up just to get these guys out because they were being interrogated and it all came out. So that's why we know how this works. You wanna make trillions off defense contracting? No bids? Put Al-Qaeda in. Sure, some of the real Al-Qaeda hate Americans and even get killed. They're dumb grunts too. They don't know the big picture. I talk to g retired generals and they go, yeah, that's the plan. That's what generals really talk about, Alex. You're right, that's the great strategy. I have to talk to three-star generals so people understand this and it's so simple. I have conversations at night with congressmen, senators, generals, folks who are scared to come on my show, and that's fine, but who want to talk to me because they know I understand this. I'm not bragging. I don't understand why I understand all this military stuff and the general public can't figure it out. It's so simple. I, I mean, I just do not understand it. This is in plain view. It's totally evil. And the public's like, gee, it's terrible. A secret Al-Qaeda army with thousands of vehicles just showed up and is blitzkrieging and is taking major cities and is about to take Baghdad on Friday the 13th. How did they do it? Why do they have American arms? Oh, it sucks. They picked them up on the ground. This is insane. It shows the globalist. This is the beginning of World War III through proxy wars. Just like they put Nazis in control of Ukraine, overthrew it. Obama called it duly elected. And then when the Russians fight back, they're terrorists. I'm not siding with the Russians, but they're not doing all this. It's incredible how dangerous this is. World War II started with proxy wars. World War I started with proxy wars. I have been having dread, as you know, with all the stuff we see, but also in my gut, folks. And I think this weekend is going to be very serious. We need to be watching this very closely. Iran is saying they're going to send troops, and they've already sent in three brigades into Iraq right over their border. I want to play Ted Cruz and Rand Paul warning about this six months ago. And we came together and stopped the open bombardment of Syria to put al-Qaeda fully in charge and kill every Christian in the country, literally. They're blowing up churches still every week there. This is a civil war across the Middle East. I want to go over to the map and break this down for you uh, here in the new InfoWars studios. Please pray for InfoWars, this operation as well. We're right at the tip of the spear. The eye of Sauron of the globalist is looking right at us. Because in the dark of the night, as the tyranny comes in, the light, the truth, like a candle on a hilltop, shines as a beacon. And InfoWars is a beacon. And I am very humble and try to do the very best job I can 
And I want to thank you all for your prayers uh, and for the fact that you've helped us be so successful together in this fight against the tyrants. Let's go to Ted Cruz and Rand Paul. We should be focused on defending the United States of America. That's right. why young men and women sign up to join the military, not to, to as, as you note, uh, you know, serve, serve as Al Qaeda's air force. It's hard to argue that the Syrian rebels that you will be arming are not associated forces of Al Qaeda. Are they not fighting on the same side of a war? Can you argue there's no connection between them, that really this is a three-way war? I know that's the way we're trying to break it down. I don't think it's that easy to say that. I think it's impossible to say that the Syrian rebels are not associated with al-Qaeda. So there is a great irony that you will be arming forces that a, a normal common sense use of the word associated can say that these people are associated with al-Qaeda. That's all. Thank you. Again, three years ago, InfoWars was one of the only media outlets pointing out that al-Qaeda was really a secret army of NATO and the globalist to destabilize the whole world and bring in tyranny as the response to it, like something out of a Revenge of the Sith episode. Ladies and gentlemen, now that's well-known all over the world, that's mainstream news, but only on the Syria issue. We expose it in Iraq, that will shut down the entire operation. And again, I want there to be sovereign nations. I don't want to have one global power block that takes over Russia and takes over Iran, especially if it's the Saudi Arabians, the worst in the Middle East, their, their government, not their people, that are going to run it all. I, I mean, no, I'm not a villain. Infowars isn't about chilling with villains, and I know you're not as Americans. So let me just explain this. Once you see the map, it'll be easy to understand for new viewers. And send this on to the prostitute media, the dinosaur media. Explain it to them. Most of them know they're just whores and they're going along with this evil. You were aiding and abetting al-Qaeda. Understand that. Now, you know about Iraq. You know about the overthrow. Put Saddam in in 79. Tell him to attack Iran. Set him up. Tell him to attack Kuwait in 1990. Tell him he can go ahead and do it. He does it. They invade. Not saying he's a good guy, but he is. was CIA. But who put him in there? Who sets this up for turmoil and destabilization? Now, fast forward to the last four years. Egypt wouldn't go along with overthrowing its neighbor, Libya. So what did they do there? They overthrew that government, put the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda in to move weapons into Benghazi in the uh, east of Libya to then start the larger overthrow. Now it's under Sharia law, under Al-Qaeda control. The Al-Qaeda flag flies in most cities there. That's on record. We showed you those articles. Mainstream news admits that. Okay, so our government bombarded Libya and did all that to put al-Qaeda in charge. It's just continuing. Then, since Egypt didn't play ball, again, they helped put them in there, but the Egyptian military threw them out. Because I guess they're bad. They don't like al-Qaeda, like me. Now, let's continue. Then we've got, uh, over here, uh, you've got Iraq, you've got Syria, you've got Jordan, you've got uh, areas of Lebanon, Israel. All of this going on. Now, right here in western Iraq, in the last three years, the U.S. military and contractors were told to give weapons, missiles, you name it, to Syrian al-Qaeda rebels to go across and attack Syria. They want to create a new country, that's this ISIS group, in between Syria and Iraq. A new Wahhabist Saudi Arabian cancer satellite right here out of part of Syria and part of Iraq. Eastern Syria, Western Iraq. Okay? Breaking the country up. But instead, they're just going for it all probably to end up cutting the country in two, which was one of the Pentagon plans, to make this part of Saudi Arabia, see Saudi Arabia? Boom, part of Saudi Arabia. And then, again, carving out their own little operation right in here. That's what they get, is they get their own little kingdom for doing this, and then Saudi Arabia gets all this. It'll all be the same thing. Okay, well, Iran doesn't like that because they're the Muslim minority, Shiite, about 19%. This is about 79% uh, Sunni and and. and Wahhabists are the enforcers of that. You know, 15 of the hijackers come from here, we attack Iraq. Now the people that supposedly attacked us on 9-11, we take over Iraq for them. You understand how evil this is? So this is a proxy war. And this is meant to take down Iran, Russia, everybody else. This is the elected Iraqi government not doing anything to us. It's being overthrown by a NATO, Saudi Arabia, Obama, globalist-backed regime. That is the total plan to then break this into turning it into a Saudi Arabian state, taking over Syria, turning it into a Saudi Arabian state, or at least getting piece of it 
if they can't get the whole country while killing every Christian they find in tolerant Syria, tolerant Iraq, killing every Christian they can get their hands on, which the progressives in this country, the anti-Christian people for some reason love, and all the whore, right-wing, fake Christian uh, folks won't even talk about or discuss. This is how sick it is. And when you go to the airport, they want to stick their hands down your pants to see if Al-Qaeda's in there or check your baby's diaper to see if Al-Qaeda or bin Laden's in there. Meanwhile, they publicly run them. And the media is all acting like they don't know what's going on. Gee, this army, this blitzkrieg just attacked and took over. We don't know where they came from. They were armed right here on the border with Syria. You go up here to Turkey, they've got Al-Qaeda training camps on record invading Syria. Al-Qaeda is being given bases everywhere, just like they were in Pakistan by the CIA. The CIA doesn't work for America, folks. It works for special globalist monopoly interest. Now, that's our breakdown. This report is very important. Uh, this humanitarian crisis is just so massive right now. And they're also taking Saudi Arabian Wahhabists into areas of Sudan and other areas while claiming they're fighting radical Islam and going into the rest of Africa, into Kenya, all the way over to the western coast of Nigeria. These groups work for the globalist. Not our government, criminal groups above it. And it's a fact. You now have been given exactly what's happening on this Friday the 13th. Let's go from our new studios over to Studio B with Leanne McAdoo and the conclusion of InfoWars Nightly News for this Friday the 13th. 2014 transmission. And remember, if you're watching or listening to this transmission, you are the resistance. Thank you, Alex. Well, let's close the show with some good news. Less than 24 hours after the Food Babe launched her petition on the Alex Jones radio show yesterday, the big beer makers responded. Anheuser-Busch posted ingredients for two of their most popular beers, and they say that they'll post the others soon. Now, Miller Coors has announced that they'll be following suit. So, of course, no doubt they responded so quickly to this story because they didn't want it to get legs, of course, through the media the way the whole Subway story went. That one just launched. So they only released the ingredients for their two most popular beers, which just so happened to have pretty basic beer-making ingredients. We will have to just wait and see if some of those other beers include the plain de-icing liquid that um, Food Babe says is being used in a lot of these beers. Now, of course, this petition just shows the power of the people. Once again, same with the Subway petition. She came on our show, all of our people got behind it, and less than 24 hours later, Subway responded and they said, we're sorry, we'll, we'll take that yoga mat foam out of our bread. Same thing with the beer makers. It's all because of you guys, people like you, and we just wanna say thank you. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please go to Prison Planet TV and become a member. You get instant access to the live streaming radio show, the nightly news, all of our special reports, and you can share your username and password with up to 11 people at the same time. So that's 11 people getting access to help fight the info war. So thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Stay tuned, I've got a very special interview with Doc Wallach. He is not only the pioneer behind longevity, but also the pioneer of epigenetics. And he's gonna be talking with us about his new book. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139.
introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable.